Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through all you need to know about reflex testing as a part of your cervical spine neurological assessment. And the reason we go through reflex tests is to establish whether or not there has been a compromise in the neurological system, either as a central compromise, including the brain and or the spinal cord, or a peripheral compromise, including the nerve roots down to the nerve periphery. And in musculoskeletal practice, there are two key outcomes that we need to look at when it comes to our reflex tests. Number one is a bilateral hyperreflexive response, which may be an indication of an upper motor neuron lesion, such as a traumatic brain injury. The second is a unilateral hyporeflexive response, which may be an indication of a lower motor neuron lesion, such as a spinal nerve root compression at a single spinal level. You can also look at our other video titled Interpretation of Reflex Tests if you want to get more information behind the tests themselves and how to interpret your findings. But for now, let's get on to our main video. Let's get clinical! So there are five reflexes that we will be taking you through in this video. The three conventional reflexes are the triceps, biceps and brachioradialis reflex tests. The other two reflexes are the Babinski and Clonus tests which should be completed as a part of a cervical spine neurological assessment if you suspect the possibility of an upper motor neuron lesion. First, we're going to start with the triceps, biceps and brachioradialis reflex tests. So essentially with our reflex testing, we are looking to see whether the patient's reflex is hyperreflexive, to stronger response, or hyporeflexive, to weaker response, and then compare the reflexes between the right side and the left side. You can categorize your reflex as hyperreflexive, hyporeflexive, normal, or absent. For now, we're going to take you through the reflexes of the upper limb, how to test them, and in our other video titled Interpretation of Reflex Testing, you can find out what each reflex means and how you can categorize your findings. So with our model machine, we're going to look at three tests for upper limb reflexes, the triceps reflex, the biceps reflex, and the brachioradialis reflex. And we're going to start with the triceps. So with our model machine, we're going to bring the uh, arm into this position in order to test the triceps. Whenever you're doing reflex testing, you should make sure that your patient's arm or leg, if you're doing the leg uh, reflexes, is relaxed. And that's because if you have a tense arm, the contraction of muscles might give you an abnormal sign of what the patient's reflex really is. So we're going to make sure that the arm is fully supported and we do this for the triceps by holding underneath the distal humerus. So to find your triceps point, find the erylecranon, which is the bony prominence at the posterior aspect of the elbow, and then come one thumb width more proximately where you will find the triceps tendon and that's the point that we're using. So from here, it's normal to test the reflex three times. We're going to perform a bouncing reflex rather than just a solid uh, reflex where you hit and, and leave the hammer at the point. So we we'll do one, two, three, and then we see the response that we get from the patient. You can see that Roisin's response is what we would categorize as normal. We have a nice bounce of the arm like so. For example, if you were having a look at a reflex that was hyperreflexive, you may see a very brisk movement. Um, whereas a hypo-reflexive one might be just a very small bouncing movement or absent where you find no reflex at all. So this is one way to, uh, to elicit the triceps reflex. Uh, if I could ask Rishin to face the back, we'll show you another way of finding this one. Again, we're going to support the arm like so, where we have the uh, patient's elbow supported at the electronon and the forearm is supported by the, by the physiotherapist's forearm. To find your point, electronon, the bony prominence, as we said before, one thumb width or one finger width more proximately, where we find the triceps tendon, and we can apply our reflex from there. The spinal level that is tested with this reflex is C7, C8. So now we're looking at the biceps reflex. If I could ask Roisin to turn around like so. Again, we're going to make sure that we're supporting the arm. As a therapist, we can do that by placing our forearm diagonally underneath the patient. To find your reflex point for the biceps, find the end of the distal biceps tendon around the cubital fossa or potentially even one thumb width distally to that. Once we found our point, we apply our 
reflexes like so with our bouncing, our bouncing oscillating movement and we can see that we get a nice bounce from the patient as well. And the spinal level that's tested with this particular reflex is C5, C6. Finally, we're going to go through the brachioradialis uh, reflex, which we can see from the front. Again, we're going to cradle the arm like so, so that the, um, the arm is relaxed. We're going to have the patient's thumb pointing towards the ceiling so that the forearm is in a, a neutral position. To find your reflex point, find the radial styloid, bony prominence at the distal end of the radius, come one thumb width more proximately, and this is where we find our point. We can then apply our reflex like so. And the spinal level that is tested with this reflex is C6, C7. You'll notice that we haven't always tested the other side, and that's just because we're trying to speed the video up for you. But in essence, with your testing, you're looking to see whether the reflex on the right side is the same as the reflex on the left side. So now we're going to look at the Babinski and the Clonus reflexes. These reflexes should be a normal part of your lumbar spine neurological assessment, and you may consider it in your upper limb neurological assessment. The reasons to consider it in your upper limb neurological assessment is if your patient presents with signs that may mimic or may indicate a upper motor neuron lesion, such as gait disturbance. So now we're going to go through the two tests, starting with the Babinski test. So in essence, for the Babinski test, we're going to be applying a scraping stimulus along the foot like so. Let's go into the details. We start with one finger around the bottom aspect of the toes in a light grip. We'll explain why this is there in a second. Next, we're going to use the back of your reflex hammer, the sharp aspect, to provide our scraping stimulus. And the stimulus needs to go in this direction, from the center of the calcaneus on the sole of the foot, up the lateral border of the foot, and across the metatarsophalangeal heads to the first digit. So that's going to be our scraping stimulus. As we provide our scraping stimulus, a normal reaction would be for the first digit to move into a flexed position. And that's why you have your finger along the bottom of the foot to see whether or not this happens. A positive result and a sign of an upper motor neuron lesion would be if the big toe suddenly goes into an extended position and the rest of the toes spread in a fanning-like manner like our model is showing you here. So let's go through the test. As we said, light grip under the balls of the toes, start at the bottom of the calcaneus and come up the lateral aspect of the foot across to the first digit, like so. Again, a normal result would be flexion of the big toe and a, a, a positive result, an indication of a upper motor neuron lesion would be extension of the big toe and the fanning of the other toes. So that's the Babinski test. Now we're gonna look at the Clonus test. For this position, uh, for this, excuse me, for this test, we're essentially going to be providing a jerking movement of the ankle into a dorsiflex position. Before we uh, actually provide the jerk, we check with our patient whether or not dorsiflexion produces any pain and whether uh, dorsiflexion meets a suitable range for us to perform the test. And we can see with our model here that this is absolutely fine and that we're clear to complete the test. So, as we said, the test is to provide a jerking movement of the ankle into a dorsiflex position like so. And you can do it a number of times just to double check. A normal result in this test would just be either that the patient holds their ankle in a dorsiflex position because of their active contraction or that the foot remains flat. A positive result, i.e. an indication of an upper motor neuron lesion, is for immediately after you apply your ankle jerk, the ankle moves into rhythmical contractions of the into plantar flexion, and it's more than three rhythmical contractions that you're looking for. So, just to clarify again, a normal result would be either for the ankle to remain in a dorsiflex position because the patient's contracted um, their dorsiflexures, or for the foot to remain in a normal posture like so. A positive result, an indication of an upper motor neuron lesion, would be when you apply your jerk for the foot to go into more than three rhythmical contractions into plantar flexion. 
a quick tip to help you remember the spinal levels that are tested by your lower and upper limb reflexes is to remember 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 as you move from the foot up to the head. Let's explain. So if we start at the bottom of the body with the ankle reflex, this tests the spinal reflex at S1, S2. The next reflex up would be the knee reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level L3, L4. If we miss the brachioradialis reflex, the next reflex up is the biceps reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level C5, C6. And finally, the next reflex up is the triceps reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level C7, C8. So therefore, we can remember that from the bottom to the top, your reflexes test the levels at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ankle, S, 1, 2. Knee, L, 3, 4. Biceps, C, 5, 6. Triceps, C, 7, 8. So to summarise this video on the reflexes of the upper limb, there are three reflexes that you need to test, which are number one, the triceps reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level C7, C8. Number two, the biceps reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level C5, C6. And number three, the brachioradialis reflex, which tests the reflex at the spinal level C6, C7. Test your patient's reflexes on both sides and categorize them as either hyperreflexive, hyporeflexive, normal, or absent. If your patient presents with more sinister signs that may indicate an upper motor neuron lesion, you should also complete the Babinski and Clonus reflexes, as well as your lumbar spine neurological assessment. And that completes our video on reflex testing as a part of your cervical spine neurological assessment. Next, I'd like to suggest you have a look at our other videos as a part of the cervical spine neurological assessment catalogue, including myotomal testing, dermatomal testing, upper limb tension tests, and palpation of the cervical spine. Thank you as always for joining us on Clinical Physio, and we'll see you again soon.